The kettlebell swing is the first of the two most important exercises in kettlebell training. Not only does it burn calories by training strength and cardio at the same time, but it also trains a balance of tension and relaxation, which translates to better performance in athletes. Dr. Stuart McGill said that the difference between a weekend warrior and an elite athlete is the ability to switch from tense to relax 800 times faster. So if you can really help your athlete train that switch, you're going to take their game to the next level. What I mean by that is at the back of the swing, you're relatively relaxed, and then you really tense up to drive the hips to drive the bell. So if you can train that relaxed tense, Relax tense, you're going to make your athletes better. For example, if you have a football player, he's going to be running. This is relatively relaxed. You can't run completely tense. So relaxed, and then when he delivers a hit, tense. Just like a boxer, they dance around the ring, and then tense, deliver a hit. So if you can train that switch, you're really going to help your athletes go to the next level. So let's work on some swings. All a swing is is a dynamic deadlift. So you want to make sure your student can deadlift before they can swing. If there's a mobility issue that prevents them from deadlifting from the ground, elevate the bell and work on their deadlifts from a partial range of motion until they can deadlift from the ground, and at that point you can start swinging. It would be irresponsible to let a student swing before they can deadlift from the ground. So let's test the sumo deadlift. We're going to line the bell up with our ankles, so the handle's going to be right at our ankles. We're going to look straight ahead, and we're going to sit back like someone pulled a chair out from underneath us that we can't quite get to. Looks like this. So that deadlift is a hinge pattern. It's a sit back and then stand up. All the swing is is a dynamic hinge pattern. So in just a second, we're going to line the bell up like a triangle in front of our feet, grab the handle, and load the hips from the beginning. We'll then throw the bell back, sit back, stand up, sit back, stand up. Looks like this. So that's what your swing looks like. The first thing you're gonna encounter with new students is probably going to be, they're gonna be very timid. They're gonna to try to do it slowly to do it correctly. The issue is you cannot do a swing slowly and do it correctly. It is a very powerful dynamic exercise. How you can help this is biomechanically match their breathing. So on the back swing, they're gonna sniff in sharply through the nose and then forcefully exhale when they stand up. What that does is it contracts the back muscles around the spine, protecting the back, but it also helps because it sounds like a mini explosion, reminding them that it's a very quick and powerful exercise. So snip in on the backswing, exhale when they stand up. It looks like this. So once you teach your students to power breathe, not only will the swing be safer, but it will be much more explosive and much more powerful, giving them a lot more benefits. The next thing you're going to encounter is people pulling the swing with their arms. If you go on YouTube, you can see swings anywhere from right off the thigh, which is fine if you're tired, to overhead. In our world, we don't swing overhead because we think it turns it into a completely different exercise and changes it a lot. And if someone doesn't have great body awareness, it can be dangerous. So if you think about punching something, if you're punching a punching bag, your abs are tight, and you're punching straight ahead, everything's connected. If you try to punch something directly over your head, everything's going to disconnect and you're going to lose your power. So never let the bell come higher than chest level. It can actually come really low, and that's okay, because all you're worried about is your hip snap. So as long as you snap the hips as hard as you can, anything in this range is fair game. You just never want them to swing over chest level. The last thing you really want to pay attention to is the height of the bell at the bottom. So at the bottom of the swing, you don't want your student to drop below the knees. So if you drop below the knees, look at what happens to my back. See how that puts a lot of pressure in my low back? Martial artists refer to two triangles, the one from the feet to the hips and the one from the knee to the hips. The small triangle from the knee to the hips that's where you want to aim your hands. So your hands are going to go through that small triangle, and that way you're going to keep everything safe. So see the difference when I'm through that triangle? Now I can power with my hamstrings and my glutes and my abs and not with my back. 
So this is the basics of the swing. We're going to get a little bit deeper in the corrective section. The kettlebell swing is an example of a hinge pattern, not a squat pattern. So if you look at the hinge, the angle of the hip is much smaller than the angle at the knee. If you look at the squat, the angle of the hip and the angle of the knee are almost the same. A squatty swing is something you're going to see very often, especially when people are transitioning from the American to the Russian swing. Greg's going to show us what a squatty swing looks like. He's going to give us about five reps. And notice how he's going up and down and not back and standing up. All right, how you fix this is you restrict the ankles. I'm going to give Greg a two by four, and I'm going to have him put the balls of his feet elevated on the two by four. What this does is it restricts the ankles and forces the hips back. Unless someone has insane ankle mobility, they physically can't squat with elevated balls of the feet. So Greg's going to do five swings on the board, and this is forcing his hips back versus squatting up and down. And after he knows what this feels like, he's going to set it down and just take a step back, dialing in that same feeling. Now, always make sure if you give your student a drill that they do the skill immediately after to neurologically dial in that feeling. So five swings matching how you felt on the board. Notice how his hips are going back. That angle of his hip is much smaller, and there's a slight angle at the knee. 